welcome to Mysteries and Mimosas. My name is Max, and here with me today is the ever-fantastic co-host, Arya. Hi, everyone. Hi, Arya. Are you excited to be back for another week of mystery? You know I am. Another week of mimosas? Of course. Another shot at the trivia title? Eh, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. That'll have to wait until Thursday, but everyone listening is rooting for you to win. It's a long time coming, and you deserve it. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for Mystery Monday. If you're joining us for the first time, Mystery Monday is a short episode we produce to bring awareness to lesser known cases with very little information available. The goal is to spread the word about these cases and encourage conversation. And of course, the end game is to hopefully help the victims find answers they've most certainly been looking for. Also, I just want to let everyone know if you have any information about any of the cases we cover, you can reach out directly to us with information by visiting us on our website at mysteriesandmimosas.net. You can also find us on Instagram at Mysteries and Mimosas Podcast. We're on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and we even have a Discord server, which we have not given up on yet. Well, you haven't given up on it yet. I think I've given up on that. Just wait. Wait until the day when... Your phone just blows up with Discord notifications because people huh. will catch on. It's a little intimidating at first, but it's actually nothing to be afraid of. It's just a chat server. Yeah, I don't know. But I will tell you, I have enjoyed watching our YouTube subscriber number keep climbing. Slowly, but it's climbing. Yeah, and I'm figuring out TikTok. Those are climbing too. Yeah. So today's case is about 23-year-old Marcus Rutledge out of Nashville, Tennessee, who vanished from Nashville on June 8th of 1998. Growing up, Marcus was your typical kid. He played instruments in band, he played football and soccer, he really enjoyed reading. Marcus was a good kid, always willing to help other people. He had a great sense of humor, and he took his schoolwork very seriously. Marcus was raised by his parents, David and Geraldine who also met while attending school in Nashville. After graduating, the two moved to Geraldine's hometown in Ypsilanti, Michigan, where they raised Marcus and his older sister, Felicia. Once Marcus graduated high school, he moved to Nashville to continue his education at Tennessee State University. Well, that's cool. His parents met while going to school there, and now he's going back to attend school at that at yeah. the same university. Uh, yeah, I'm sure his parents might have had some, you know, something to do with it, like, hey... This is where we met, this is where I went to school, and he probably had aspirations to attend the same school. Yeah. At the time of his disappearance, Marcus was a senior at the university, and he was the father of a four-year-old son named Darius. At that time, Marcus was living in Nashville, and Darius was living with his mom in Knoxville. Although Marcus was no longer in a relationship with Darius's mother, Marcus would travel from Nashville to Knoxville to visit Darius as much as he could. Sounds like a good dad. Yeah. While living in Nashville, Marcus also had a two-year-old daughter with his girlfriend. We don't have the daughter's name. But he had two kids, the four-year-old Darius and his two-year-old daughter. On June 7th, Marcus spent the night with his girlfriend, and on the morning of June 8th, Marcus took their daughter to daycare. His girlfriend reports she spoke with Marcus around 1.30 p.m. that day. This was the last time Marcus was ever seen or heard from again. Later that evening, David received a phone call from Marcus's worried girlfriend after she was unable to get a hold of him. As you can imagine, this worried Marcus's parents because it wasn't typical for Marcus to lose contact with his family. After trying to reach Marcus, David called Marcus's girlfriend back and asked if she had heard from him, but she hadn't. It's got to be pretty scary, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. As she became more and more worried, Marcus's girlfriend decided to go to his duplex apartment to see if she could find him. So he, they didn't live together then? No, I don't they think so. They each had their own place. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, she, so yeah, because he stayed the night with her. Right. Took their daughter to daycare, and she then, after becoming worried, goes to his duplex apartment to try to find him. Got it. After contacting her, you know, Marcus's dad to right. find out if David heard anything, and he hadn't. So with the help of Marcus's former roommate and friend, they opened a window to Marcus's apartment, but they didn't find Marcus inside. They did, however, find Marcus's dog locked in the bathroom with the door closed. Now, I don't know if this is like a typical place to keep his dog or if it's unusual for his dog to be locked in the bathroom. I mean, when we leave for an extended period of time, we have our dogs in a kennel. They're trained to be in the the crate. And so I don't know if this was normal for him or, or if this was odd. 
Because Marcus's family and friends knew this was unusual behavior for him, they called the police and they reported him missing. The Metro Nashville Police Department started searching for Marcus and learned that his four-door Dodge Neon with Michigan plates was also missing. That's red, by the way. As you can imagine, the police quickly turned their attention to the car. They solicited help from local media outlets asking the public to help find Marcus and the car. Well, the car should stand out at least a little bit, right? Because it has Michigan plates and they're in Tennessee, so... Yeah, exactly. It might be a little easier to spot it. Yeah, I mean, I think that back then, the uh, red and Dodge Neons were a dime a dozen. You could probably find them all over, but in Tennessee, with the Michigan plates, that would surely stand out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So on July 1st of 1998, only about a month after Marcus disappeared, police recovered his car at the Riverwood Apartments on Cabot Drive, in Nashville. Hmm. Do you know how far away from his own duplex that was? I don't know exactly how far away it was, but um, it was across town. It was on the other side of town. Okay. According to detectives, when the car was processed, they were able to recover some latent fingerprints. But as of now, they haven't been able to match the fingerprints to anybody. It's interesting they haven't been able to match those fingerprints to anybody. Because, you know, you're fingerprinted anytime you're arrested, um, anytime you're charged with a crime, if it's ordered by the judge, um, anytime you get a driver's license nowadays, you, you have to get fingerprinted. Anytime you apply for a job that requires a background check. So it's very weird that nobody's ever matched these fingerprints. Yeah. I do know that the main fingerprint database, APHIS, is not the only fingerprint database out there. So it could be that they're, that, you know, whoever matches this fingerprint is in another database in another state somewhere and just never put into APHIS. I didn't know that. I thought that APHIS was the database that everyone yeah, used it's the for, main this, database. for this reason, so that we're all on the same page. Yeah, it's the main database, hmm. but it's not the only one. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. it should be. That should way you be. don't run into these issues, right? There's one other interesting thing about this case. Remember uh, Marcus's friend that helped his girlfriend get into the apartment? Yeah. His name was Ethan Gibbs. Less than a year after Marcus disappeared, Ethan was murdered. Ethan was gunned down on February 23rd of 1999 at his duplex apartment in Nashville. What? Yeah. One of Ethan's friends was charged with Ethan's murder, but the charges were later dropped and that suspect was released. Well, so that's interesting. You know, I wonder if there's a connection there. It's, it's kind of odd, well, obviously, that less than a year later... His friend and former roommate is gunned down at his duplex apartment in the same city. Right. Yeah, it's very suspicious. And although Marcus's family believes that there is a connection between Ethan's murder and Marcus's disappearance, police don't have any evidence or information to lead them to believe that these two cases are connected. I wonder what the family, like why the family thinks they're connected or like what reason there would be like, you know, what. They had an enemy or something in common or... You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's very strange for Marcus to just up and disappear. I mean, he was regularly traveling to Knoxville to visit his son. I mean, he just had a two-year-old daughter that he took to daycare. He seemed to be very well-educated and took school very seriously. So for him to just up and vanish, he didn't do this on his own. Right. And so maybe that's why the family thinks, oh, well... There has to be some kind of connection because his close friend, Ethan, who was trying to get into his apartment, got into his apartment to try to find him, is killed like a year, not even a year later. Yeah. I, you know, it's got to be difficult for the family for all these years to not have any answers on why, you know, whatever happened to Marcus. And in 2015, Marcus's mom, Geraldine, passed away before she was ever able to find any answers into her son's disappearance. That's sad. I hate I hate for that to happen, you know, like a family waits. Well, at that time in 2015, it had been almost 20 years with no answers, you know, of where her son is. And she never got those answers. Right. And, you know, the rest of his family is still looking for those answers. Mm -hmm. And it's just got to be super difficult and painful to have to not know when you have somebody just taken from you. You know, it's different than an unexpected death. I mean, that's tragic you know, nonetheless, but, you know, say you have a family member that's unexpectedly taken from you because they're in a, a fatal car crash or, you know, a crime of violence or something, you know, most people get to 
have those answers immediately and, you know, bury or, or have services for their loved one. In this case, nobody knows what happened, whether he's alive, whether something nefarious happened to him. They just don't know. And it's unfortunate that Geraldine passed away before she could find those answers. Yeah, it is. At the time of his disappearance, Marcus was 23 years old and described as six feet tall and 190 pounds. He has black hair and brown eyes. Marcus would be 49 years old today. If you have any information about the disappearance of Marcus Rutledge, you are encouraged to contact the Metro Nashville Police Department Cold Case Unit at 615-862-7329. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate the help, and, and hopefully, if you are listening, you could also remember reach out directly to us at mysteriesofmimosas.net. Send us a line. Uh, there's a chat box you can... Give us a tip, and we will pass that information along for you if you don't want to be identified. What else you have? I don't have anything else. I don't have anything else either, and this is a super short, super mysterious case mm -hmm. out of Nashville. I hope that we find answers about what happened to Marcus, and if we do, we will update you here. And in the meantime, please uh, do us a favor, help us out by clicking five stars, give us a review, send us a line, send us a message, and share the word about our podcast. That helps us out. Yes, I love seeing all the five-star reviews. That's so very much appreciated, uh, or the five-star ratings. But if you want to leave a review, please do that as well. And if you want to leave a review for specifically Max and you don't want to, you know, you, you, maybe you feel like Arya is only worth two stars for her involvement in today's mm. episode, that's mm -hmm. okay. But if I'm three, if I'm worth three stars and Arya is worth two stars, then, I mean, math tells me that's a five-star rating. True. Or, you know, the times when Max is one star and I'm four stars. Well, I didn't want to go you, there. You don't have to even mention that part. You don't have to mention that he was just one star. You can just mention my four stars. Yeah, or if you don't think Aria Parte, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can go back and forth with this all day, but I'm not going to. Okay, so thank you for listening. And what else you got? Anything else? Just cheers. Cheers. <laughs>